Hey, what's up? Leron here. Thank you so much for joining me today. And it is time, once again, to critique your paintings. And I do want to thank everyone who sent them in uh, and, and congratulate you for your courage. I really, really enjoyed seeing them and you did a fantastic job. So let's get to it. So let's get started. We'll look at some of your beautiful, beautiful works. We'll start, and I wrote the names this time. Uh, we'll start with Chuck McKinney here. Thank you so much for sending me this. And if you've watched the previous video, you probably recognize um, his art. Uh, he had this beautiful fox last time. I believe it was a fox, right? Um, and so, yeah, this is really, really nice. And you have mentioned in the email that you have some more work, and I saw a bit of the process, I believe. Um, I really, really like this. One thing I would suggest you do, because you are at a place where you're even able to convey uh, the fur without going into too many uh, details. It does feel to me, to be honest, a little bit overworked around the edges. I would have liked it to kind of blend together a little more, but you are able to do it in an interesting way that works well. It doesn't just look like you're doing a lot of sketchy uh, watercolor lines that have no rhyme or reason. They actually do feel consolidated. Sorry, which is a good thing. Uh, what I would do is around the, again, peripherals of the painting, I would try to block things together. For example, if you look at the ear right here, there is um, an area that's the same value, pretty dark, and it's unified together. And what this does is further bring out the few strands of hair that are visible individually. So that balance, I think, will really help you. Again, in the shadows, relax a little with the multiple brush marks. Um, now, one more thing is the values. Now, there is a bit more of uh, a stronger, darker value around the, the nose, obviously. Like, the highlights on the nose are a little too light on your painting. Uh, and the mouth. Now, this is a, a choice you can make because I actually prefer the way you did it to the reference. I think the, the, no, the mouth is showing better. So, I actually prefer your way of doing it, particularly for the mouth and nose area. Here's where I would change it again, the ear. If you look at this top right ear, it's so nice that because it's dark, you can tell that the head itself is in front of it. This part of the head is in front of the ear and you can see this really well in the reference photo, but it's kind of lost in the painting itself. So that's something I would uh, try and work on. So, and, and one thing I do love is the background. You were brave with the temperature. You didn't just try and mix that same gray that is in the reference photo. You actually went for that beautiful blue. So you slightly exaggerated the temperature, which is something I love. I do that all the time. So how do you do the, all of this? How do you like to be practical? You zoom out a bit. You take a few steps away from the painting and from the reference. You look at them from afar and you try to work to think section by section. Is this dark enough? Is this too dark? And you go one by one and you will see it in the end. A quick tip I can give you in addition to that is turn both black and white. Take a picture of your painting, turn it black and white and turn the reference photo black and white as well, and you will see the difference in values much more clearly. And you'll see where the shapes are a little clearer and more consolidated in the reference, and where you kind of lost that thing in the painting, because you simply didn't go dark enough or didn't merge enough. Um, you can actually do everything I said on the painting as it is, um, even though I love it, it's it's perfect. Like I know you talk, you explained uh, what it's for, and I think it's perfect and it's deliverable for sure. But if you want to go that extra mile the next time, then you can already do this on top of what we have here. Funny enough, you don't have to start anew. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Move on to the next one. Now I don't have the name. All I have is the and let me know who you are. C G E Lormino. I'm not sure. Hopefully that's how, I mean, I don't know, because that's all I have. I don't have a name here. And it's sometimes hard to connect the uh, emails and usernames from YouTube or Instagram. So let me know who you are in the comment below. Uh, but really, really nice work. Uh, you didn't uh, say too much about it. You did mention, I believe, that you tried keeping the uh, areas merged together. And I can tell for the background, uh, for the, uh, the ground and the sky that you have connected a lot. To me, my advice to you would be to first... If you enjoy these references, go for it and paint them all day long. I would go and take a few steps back and work on something simpler um, because your shapes, they don't feel three-dimensional enough. And again, take everything I say, everyone, with a grain of salt. If that's the style you're aiming for, if that's the, the, the thing you're aiming for, again, don't, don't listen to me, do you. But I'm just saying, if you do want to take it to the next level, I take a few steps back, work a bit more on my accuracy and my ability to... Uh, draw things with volume, with three-dimensionality, something we will talk about more in the near future. <clears throat> and then 
uh, master that to some degree. You don't have to like do this for years. I think a few months of working on that is perfect. And then move on to paint, okay? Uh, so just my, my uh, advice. The composition itself, it's a little messy, um, both in the colors and in the shapes. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the background that I think could be simplified or modified to have a cleaner impression. With that, I actually get a really good sense of place here. I really feel like I'm almost there. And I love that actually the colorfulness works in your favor. I would go with a more limited palette, but but it actually works in your favor because these types of, I don't know if it's um like, um what do you call, I always forget the word for these these things, like where you uh, the walk, walk around or where you walk next to the beach, or maybe it's a park or something like amusement park or something like that. It works really well. Um, so I really like the thought and the idea. I simply think the tips I gave you will help you to further enhance that. Okay, so if this makes sense, let me know who you are in the comment down below. Uh, this one's by John. Thank you so much for sending me these, uh, this one and a couple of others. Uh, you did a really, really fantastic job here. And it was great seeing the reference. So you took a picture of your workspace and also the painting itself. And the workspace showed the reference, which is nice. So taking a sip, <laughs> um, I really, really like that. One thing I think is genius is how you incorporated and separated the green and the yellow in the foreground in the grass. I love that you didn't just keep it flat. The reference obviously is beautiful. It looks great. Uh, I actually like your approach a little more in that regard. Um, one thing I would say that, that one of the only things that just stands out a little bit is the control in wet and wet, which isn't easy. For example, you can especially see this on the foliage to the left there at the back. Um, a little more separation of the light yellow and the dark green in wet and wet. So maybe that's something you want to work on in a more dedicated way, for example, to work on wet and wet uh, and try and get that fine control, which isn't easy, but it is worth it. Uh, I would do that probably. I love how you change the sides, like the trees and, and uh, the tree on the right, and you dropped some of the trees on the left that I actually like, so I would keep them. Um, and uh, you left the birds out, so I don't know if you added them later. I do think they add a bit of movement, so I'd actually keep them. Um, a couple of proportional things. Your, your perspective is actually really good. Um, I like it. Just the stairs, for example, on the right side here, they're a little wider, so as long as you did it on purpose, that's fine. But if you uh, if you weren't pl if you tried getting them wider and they weren't wide enough, and you didn't notice, then something to fix in the drawing stage. That's fine though. Uh, notice the chimneys; they're a little bit darker in the reference, and I would expect it because it's a very strong terracotta kind of red brown. Uh, so I would do them darker, but other than that, uh, there it's like it's not that big of a deal, I think. Really, really nice job. I love it, and the colors work. I can see that you're you're not necessarily using a limited palette per se. I think I do recognize a few blues, like a warmer and a cooler one, but it is still quite organized. I like it a lot. So yeah, that's that's great. I really like this one, and we have three more, I believe. Uh, based on uh, whose work is it? Uh, Ricardo Wolfson, which, uh, who I wasn't familiar with, so it's really nice seeing uh, this kind of work. So your work is to the left, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, <coughs> and I'll tell you something about all of these three. I love them. Now, here's why I love them. It looks like you changed a few things around and it's still working really nicely. It's like you preserved some things and you removed some things and it still looks really good. The first thing I do notice is the harmony, the color harmony. So it seems like uh, Ricardo used a bit uh, warmer shadows. It could be the picture, but I believe it's not. I believe it's actually warmer shadows and you mix them a little cooler, which is perfectly fine again, as, as long as it's done uh, on purpose. Uh, so just something to pay attention to. Uh, these shadows here could be much darker. And if you notice, I think you missed it. There is a cast shadow on the door itself. Uh, so this should be, uh, there should be a, a diagonal shadow right over the door, at the top of the door. You see, I think it's pretty visible here. Um, now, one more thing that Ricardo didn't do, and I would do to improve upon the uh, source, is there should be a line here. You're actually seeing the inner side of the door when it opens. So this is the door. And let's say it opens, so you see this. I want to see this, the, the blockiness of the door. Just like you got it in the opening, I want to see it there. Your perspective is really on point. I love it. I think you did a really good job. 
Um, uh, you change some of the structures, but that's fine. A bit less rounded, a little straighter, that's cool. I don't mind it. I love this contrast here. Consider for this door, consider doing the shadowy part a little uh, warmer still. Like like uh, Ricardo did it here. You see it's like a strong brown orange. I think that'll work well. Sometimes these types of objects with fiery color, the shadow also tends to be a little warm. So just a thing to have in mind. Let's look at the others. Really, really nice. Notice the contrast in the sky. That's like the most obvious thing here. You could go darker with them. You can just paint another glaze over it because a part of the beauty and composition here is the fact that the sky kind of frames the building and it's the building is essentially created negatively, completely negatively. Um, some angles of the shadows are a little off like this, a little off. The, sh the, the angle of this line in particular should be a little more diagonal, you see, and there's a tendency to flatten these lines. Um, but other than that, really, really nice. I like it. I like how you preserve the perspective of the windows. Notice again, a little more like the perspective here could be a little better. Uh, this line should be a little more diagonal for the bottoms of the windows. You see here, it's a little more diagonal. Uh, but I, I do feel like you constructed the perspective on your own from the beginning and you didn't just draw it as you see it, which is great. Keep going, uh, keep doing it this way if that's how you did it. Here you can actually see the uh, bulkiness of the door. You see that other, the change of, uh, of form uh, and you got it too. So that's really, really nice. It's good that you notice this nuance. Really, really nice job, John. Keep it up. Uh, notice those contrasts. You can go a little darker with the skies because that's the magic here, framing the buildings that are white against the sky. That's really, really nice scenes. Uh, so yeah, good job. This one is by Kishan MK. Um, really nice job. I'll say a few things. It's really interesting. So for you, I'd like to see a little more flow. It feels like there's a lot of ruggedness, which is great in some places and unnecessary in others. Let me show you. This area that hopefully you can see me marking, I'll zoom in a bit. This I love. I love how you're showing you right here the the jagged edges of the rocks and how, how aggressive it is. That looks beautiful. This part here, also beautiful. But then within the shadows, within... The other areas I would hope to see a bit more of unity because that's what's going to help us focus on these beautiful jagged shapes. So by keeping and look at the reference photo, you can see it here too. In the reference photo, oops, uh, hopefully you can see this. <laughs> Just a second. Here, it's a little more unified. Zoom out a bit. You can see it as one shape. Hopefully my face isn't obstructing that part of the video. Uh, hopefully I'll arrange it properly. Um, also on the right side, I actually like what you did here. I actually like what you did here. That's really nice. Now, <clears throat> there is a tendency to paint things as you think they seem. So, you know that this mountain ridge in the background is... In reality, the same color as this, but due to aerial perspective, look at how light it is. This section here, all of the background here, look at how light that is. Now look at what you did here. You kept it at a similar value. A lot of the darks here are almost as dark as here. That's a no-no. What you want to do is create a clear separation between that arch that is closest to us and the background. Okay, so that's my, the, I think the key takeaway for this painting, even more than everything I said so far, on a macro level, you take a few steps back, does it look like there's depth? That's how you solve it. You go lighter on this background mountain ridge and you also go cooler. Again, there's a tendency to think because you know, and it happens for trees all the time. You see trees in the distance, the trees are actually gray or gray, blue, green, and people still paint them bright green because they know that's how trees, that's the color of trees. If I'll go there, if I'll walk all the way there, that's what they're gonna be. But from afar, remember, we have all this air in between us and the reference. And this air is full of particles and we do lose some information because of that. Okay, so it's. I think it's a good topic for me for a video. I'm gonna write it down for myself. Uh, aerial perspective, I think, um, I should um, I should work do more uh, more content on it because it is it is an important topic. That's the key takeaway. If you do this, this painting will jump a few levels ahead. I love your rendering. I think you did a good job ca capturing the nuances of rocks. Uh, just this one thing will really appreciate it, uh, Im improve it. So thank you so much for sending me this one. Here's one by Rita Brata. Again, the blue theme. I love it. I don't have a reference for this one, unfortunately. And next time you send me one, please include a reference photo. <coughs> I'll just be able to give you more concrete advice. So, I love that you work monochromatically. That's really, really good. I will say one thing that I would want to see you work on 
is actually the drawing stage. And I think last time I also said it with the water drops, right? Uh, I want you to work on perspective and drawing. I want you to take a few steps back, move to simpler uh, objects such as a cylinder or a box like this book of Claymore. Um, maybe you didn't see it because my... I usually crop the video, but uh, in any case, simpler, uh, slightly simpler um, subject, and really focus on getting the drawing, uh, getting the drawing to be accurate in terms of perspective. Okay, having everything aligned properly, because I can see for the face of um, Lady Liberty, right? That's, I mean, that's Liberty uh, statue. That, that I can see that the perspective is a little off. Okay, like these eyes should follow the same line. And when we draw it as we see it, we have a tendency to make these mistakes. Very natural, it's something to work on. On the value front, I like what you did. I do think if I'd see the reference photo, I could give you better advice. I love this dark area here. I think some, I suspect some areas here under the chin and the neck should be as dark. I suspect. So it'll be good to see the reference photo. And for the next one, send me uh, the reference too. But a good job. Keep it up. I like how you use, uh, you paint monochromatically. That's really good. That's a great way of seeing your mistakes more easily. And I want you to keep doing that if possible. When you transition to slightly simpler subjects, I want you to preserve that. Go with one color, black or blue, doesn't matter really. Next up, we have Reed Palmer. Now, I made a mistake because if you watch the previous critique video, I actually had these crows in the thumbnail, but somehow I did not go over uh, uh, the painting. So my bad read, and now I'm including them and I will show more in a, in a second, the process, I did save it from Instagram. So this is a beautiful example. First, let's start with the crows. A beautiful example of how you can take the reference and improve upon it and change it and still maintain its essence. So what you see here is basically kind of following the, the drawing, obviously, the pattern of values, a little dark, a little light, and using all kinds of expressive colors, which I love. I love how you did it. Um, <clears throat> I think if I had to improve something, it'll actually be maybe more on the, and some values are off. For example, the, f the light feathers are actually much darker than they appear to be. So this should in theory be darker, but that's really nitpicking because you went with a lighter color scheme anyway. Um, I would consider maybe making the contrast between the crows stronger. So you see how here at the meeting point, the crow on the left is lighter due to the li angle of light and all of that. Now uh, it's not really, I don't think they're actually different, but the one on the right is much darker. I would want to see a bit of that, at least here, just to make a bit more of a separation between them. I think compositionally it would look really good. But other than that, I don't have much to say. I really, really like this one. I like that you use a uh, minimal color scheme. I can see that there isn't too much of like French ultramarine, maybe some kind of a Crinacridone rose, an Indian, an Indian yellow or New Gamboge or kind of a warm yellow. I, this is more <laughs> my favorite color scheme pretty much. Uh, so I really, really like it. Um, I don't have too much like f feedback wise other than that. I think you did a fantastic job here. Just think about the large composition. All of these beautiful shapes, they work perfectly well. Um, now, if your intention was to kind of let this area blend together because you want to um, attract more attention to here, that's definitely an argument for uh, doing it exactly as you have. But just as, an, as a suggestion, maybe have the contrast next to the beak a little stronger, make the, the crow on the right a little darker, and that will really make both the beak and the neck pop. Okay, so something to uh, have in mind. And the dog, I love it. I love this one so much. It has a very almost gouache feel to it because it seems like you just put the shapes you saw pretty accurately too and let it dry and then put it, you did a few glazes not too many and i like it i have no i don't have much to say i really like that and the doggo with the with the ball looking looking at you like let's play that's perfect i love it love it and i also wanted to show the process because you did tell me you had it on instagram so i uh, uh, got it off of there really beautiful work and um very similar process to what i do really an underpainting um uh, bringing out a few of the highlights uh a few of the uh, the stronger colors in the in the in the uh, to pop from under the uh, next few washes and the, it's really nice. I love the approach uh, I'm actually curious as to how you got the yellows to be so to laid over the blues and still maintain their fire uh, So let me know in a comment down below pretty curious about that Maybe this uh, simply had to dry a bit and then it went lighter So you could do that and it just doesn't show in the picture But you see this spot right here especially here like it's it has a blue under it so i wonder how you were able to get that yellow to shine so much um let me know if you simply painted it over it great job 
I love these. And uh, I didn't uh, mention, of course, check out uh, the Instagram at rpalmerdesigns. Uh, next up, we have Sujanith, and I believe that's the last one. Okay, so Sujanith, really, really nice job. I love what you did here um, with the the gradual transition is really, really nice. And the beautiful thing is we have both the reference photo and my painting to compare to. So this is Sujanith's work. This is my painting from the demo on YouTube. And this is the original reference photo. Now, a couple of things. Uh, my main goal in the video was to show how you can combine a lot of areas. And I don't see you did enough of that. So for example, this background here, you could combine it with the wash of the car. Now, I know it's not easy, and I do see some of it here kind of blended together, which I love. That's really nice. Um, also, in the shadow here, it could, could, should be much darker and much more combined with the orange. So, if you zoom out a bit, you'll notice you're missing um, that connection and also some darker values. Like, you can go brave. I can actually, if you, if you physically, if I was there, I could go over this with another layer and it'll look perfect. It's just a matter of adding some darker darks, okay? It just simply uh, looks a little unfinished to me. Now, notice the tires, and I have talked about it in a recent video, uh, they should be a little more rotated and thinner, okay? So the diagonal is going the wrong way. The long axis should go from this direction, hopefully, I, it's probably you can't see, but I'll, I'll sh check out a video on, on uh, uh, ovals in perspective and you'll get it, it's a recent one, if you haven't seen it. Um, and I had one more point that I wanted to say that I forgot. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, the window here, to me it plays no purpose. Uh, I would actually drop it. Uh, it feels like this corner should be empty. Maybe I would add something here above the car, but not here in the center, kind of above the car itself. Uh, but I would avoid adding this kind of a detail. And if I have, you need to notice the location and the perspective you kind of exaggerated it which is a tendency of people that so the perspective is very subtle it's like this and what you did is exaggerated more so what this feels like is like the street is going uphill and so even the placement of the sidewalk and the windows is a little off so uh, do a double check for that when you do the perspective but to me uh, actually here this could really be improved just by adding another darker wash you can go darker okay so don't be afraid and thank you you're a long time viewer so we, we, you and I have a lot of emails from you I know I need to answer and I'm sorry I'm super slow but uh, and usually I'll answer in a consolidated manner so my apologies um, but but yeah I think do a double check on the drawing stage okay and make sure that, that the lines actually like if you look at this line for example the the sidewalk ends here so in my seen it's to the left right and here it's a little more to the center it's not completely to the center but it's closer to the center uh, and if you look at this side here it's about the middle here it's about the middle here it's a little above that so it's very subtle but it is still um, you can feel it it just feels like it goes uphill now it still could be just a, something that goes uphill uh, but I would want you to do that and also on top of that values you can go much darker don't be afraid to do that you can put another glaze that's as dark as the background over the car and keep it orange keep it warm don't go fully blue because a lot of the beauty is in those shadows being a little orange okay um, one last thing I wanted to say um, I forgot if I remember I'll, I'll, I'll maybe worst case email it to you I had one more thing that I forgot oh yeah yeah okay I wanted to say good job on the front tire that's really nice you got the shapes really actually this falls really nice into uh, perspective the inside of the tire the, the plate or whatever you call it I keep forgetting uh, not the rounded shape but the middle the metal part that's really nice again could be darker though uh, but really really good job on that sorry about my fun uh, and yeah I hope everyone found these tips useful I will do another one, so simply send me your works. Please send them with the reference if possible. Again, most of you did, but please uh, try again for next time. Uh, for those who haven't, and let's wrap it up face to face. So once again, thank you so much to anyone who sent these in. And again, you're very courageous and that's great. And I do think I can turn this into like a recurring type of video because I do enjoy it. It's fun for me to make. It's a little bit of preparation, um, but but I do enjoy this kind of a video. So again, feel free, just go to my channel, go to the about tab and then uh, find my email, send me works for critique. Please send both, again, the, the photo of your painting and the reference, because that way I can really tell you what to improve compared to that. And I think it could be really fun in the future when I kind of improve the setup to maybe even fix 
things for you. So for example, to actually show you what I would do next, because very often the mistakes are something you just need to add. You don't even need to start over as you've seen today. And yeah, I'll make sure to do another one soon. So feel free to send them to me and I would be happy to do that. I wanna thank you once again for watching. I really do appreciate it. As you're watching it, I'm on vacation. So I filmed all of these videos the same day, same shirt. You see it recurring often if, if, you, were, if you wonder to yourself. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be a couple of quicker videos um, that were easier to film. No live streams, unfortunately, uh, but I will go back to it. I will keep you updated as soon as I do go back to doing live streams. Thank you so, so, so much. And I will talk to you again real soon.